welcome to the CNBC TV 18 conversation on the road ahead for the Indian IT sector. We're back here again at the NASCOM Leadership Summit. This is the 10th year that CNBC TV 18 has been bringing you takeaways from the NASCOM Leadership Summit on what the road ahead for the IT sector could look like. Now, we've already got the forecast that's come in from NASCOM. FY16 growth guidance between 12 to 14 percent in constant currency terms at between 110 to 112 billion dollars in FY15 delivered about 13.1 percent in constant currency terms. Now, just to put things in perspective, the industry has failed to achieve the upper end of NASCOM's guidance for the last four years. So that's going to be one of the questions that I'm going to put to my panel. Should we have uh, a, a, a more conservative guidance perhaps as we go forward? But to answer all of those questions, joining us, the confusing part of my panel, R. Chandrasekharan from Cognizant and R. Chandrasekhar from NASCOM. This is going to be a tough one. And Nasheer Kaka from McKinsey and Dinesh Malkani from Cisco. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us. Let me start by asking you that question, sir, about the road ahead and the guidance that NASCOM is holding out. Four years on a trot haven't been able to meet the upper end of the guidance. Is it time now to perhaps be even more tempered? You've already put out a fairly muted guidance. It's the same pretty much as last time around. Uh, maybe time to do a bit more sort of reality check, be more conservative then? I think the whole idea of a band is to reflect the expectations, both in terms of what the industry expects to achieve as well as the uh, environment in which we are operating. And in a sense, you are right that there are many factors uh, operating uh, globally in terms of what's happening in different uh, geographies, what's happening in Europe, for example, where there are certain kinds of difficulties, what's happening in an economy like Japan, for example, uh, where there are other uh, kinds of problems. And then the whole business of currency fluctuations, which is yet another dimension to this uh, thing. So uh, this volatility and unpredictability certainly makes uh, the job uh, quite difficult. But what's interesting is that over uh, these years, the, irrespective of the band, let's leave sure. the band for a sure. moment, but the actual number has been fairly constant, mm. which means that in the middle of all of this turbulence, there has been a fair degree of constancy about the rate of growth. So the band reflects the fact that there is a slightly higher mm. aspiration mm. and an expectation. Mm. But then uh, some of these factors perhaps do uh, stand in the way of achieving the higher end, but we don't expect this turbulence to last forever. We don't expect oil prices to halve every sure. two years. Sure. So, you know, uh, we'll have to see how uh, this goes. I I'll talk to you about the demand environment in just a bit. You know, m beating this guidance is not an issue as far as Cognizant <laughs> is concerned. You've had another very uh, strong quarter. but. Europe was something that everyone within the conference is talking about that continues to be the big pain point, whether it's Wipro, it's Infosys. Most companies feel that that is an area of concern and is likely to continue to be an area of concern in this fiscal. Uh, what worries you besides Europe today? Actually, overall, if you really look at it, the demand environment is uh, uh, quite good. You know, the U.S. economy is doing well. The emerging economies, particularly the APAC, is, mm. uh, is doing uh, extremely well and our business is uh, growing. Europe is actually a long-term bet. You know, you will see the lumpiness in demand. Some quarters it may be good, some quarters it may not be good, but it's a long-term play. The pressure points that the European corporations face is no different from what the other corporations mm. around the globe face. So, uh, but, so Europe is going to be a long-term bet. But the way you need to service the European market also needs a different strategy and approach because you need to have a lot more local presence because of the language issues, sure. culture issues. Sure. So how do you service, service the European market is going to be very mm. different. So I think organizations need to adapt themselves to service different uh, but markets. But do you see FY16 being significantly better than FY15? We see, yeah, definitely. You know, it varies from company to company, yeah. but overall, from an industry point of view, we see the demand environment. To and do specifically much. from a cognizant point of view? Yeah, we, we expect to... How much uh, more can you better what you've already been able to deliver <laughs> in the last fiscal year? From a cognizant uh, point of view, we have guided to 19% uh, growth uh, for our financial year. So definitely we expect better results because, you know, we won significant number of large deals during the course of uh, FY14 mm. and all those deals are expected to ramp up uh, during uh, 2015. So we expect our revenue to be better. Okay, I'll come back on deals in just a bit, but Nashir, let's talk about the year ahead and we've just heard a 
comment coming in saying that this uh, FI-16 is probably going to look better, at least for specific companies, uh, in comparison to FI-15. Near-term growth will continue, be, continue to be driven by traditional businesses. IMS is not going anywhere despite all the talk of digital and so on and so forth. No, I think first issue, and it's, it's nice to note that we say 12 to 14 percent is muted guidance. I don't think there's <laughs> many countries, industries, or sectors which will ever say that, but um, we're happy to take that tag. Uh, I think clearly, I think what, um, what Chandra said exactly is right, which is the demand environment appears to be reasonably strong. Uh, but I think there, as you look three to four years out, I think what we see clients doing very much is they're shifting budgets. Mm. They are shifting budgets from what would we would call traditional legacy um, type investments and, and applications towards much more, um, whether you take digital, cybersecurity, mm. IoT kind of investments. Mm. And as that transition occurs, you'll see movement of budgets and therefore different companies showing different growth rates sure. depending on which budget they are catering to. Mm. So I think that level of uncertainty uh, continues. but. Underneath that all, technology is still proving to be the single greatest lever of productivity, whether you take the U.S. or you take India as well. Yeah. So I think you can bet on the fact that this industry will continue to show grow, robust growth. Dinesh, uh, you know, let's talk about India before we talk about the rest of the world. And how confident are you feeling, despite what the government is saying in terms of the objectives for digital India and so on and so forth, domestic revenues and the domestic market, the size of the opportunity here, do you see that being significantly different uh, compared to the conversations we've had around this area in the past? So there are three things that I observe very closely. And, uh, you know, the first is, Technology is becoming, uh, you know, front and center and at the heart of transformation that businesses are going sure. through. You know, it's very hard for a business leader to sort of keep monitoring every trend, but the one thing that companies need to watch out for, be it any vertical, is when you wake up in the morning, it could mm -hmm. be a completely different world. Yeah. Somebody may have come in uh, very fast, agile, uh, connecting with their customers through completely different media, mm -hmm. And, and be able to cater to a much larger and faster marketplace, right? So that's the first thing which is very encouraging, mm -hmm. by the way. We've seen success in e-commerce that's yeah. driven it. Yeah. We're seeing success in the transportation industry. So, so that's first. The second is, I, I also look at the tier three and tier four cities and the adoption of IT has gone up there. Yeah. You know, we can sense the business moving mm -hmm. very positively in that direction, which is very encouraging, by the way, because traditionally those sectors tend to be a little slower. And the third thing is, you look at the national agenda, right? Digital India is starting to pick sure. up. There are obviously bits and pieces in which success has been demonstrated, mm -hmm. but I look at this as a slightly longer term journey, yeah. but one that will encourage, you know, when we go from 300 million connected internet users to 525 in the yeah. next three years, look at the opportunity for businesses to use that sure. to go out and promote themselves. I personally feel pretty optimistic about So the, what is it going to mean specifically for somebody like you? For Cisco, what would it mean? So I think when, when businesses or countries think about digitizing, it means you need more networks, right? Because obviously yeah. the you know, flow of data is, is very high. You need security. You need data centers. You need to have wireless. Those are all opportunities for companies yeah. like ourselves. Yeah. And obviously the broader ecosystem. We have a fantastic startup ecosystem coming up in yeah. India now that will innovate on top of the infrastructure that companies are building, right? So it's an evolution of large companies playing in mega projects and then the startups building applications and sort of things that will yeah, drive end-user behavior. Sure, sure. But let me come back to you, Chandra. And, uh, you know, looking at the commentary coming in from analysts who are tracking the sector, that while demand environment, as you pointed out, is looking strong, they do say that deal complexity is on the rise and that is going to result in lumpiness in revenues. Would you agree with that? I don't particularly agree with that because now customers are really wanting us to take end-to-end -end responsibility. They are willing to sign long-term contracts. So, yeah, the, deals, the, the deal cycle may take long time to close, mm. but once it is closed, it's going to be over a longer period of time. So if over the next few years, if that gets streamlined, you're going to have a steady stream of uh, revenue. But mm. it's not going to be guaranteed, but you need to deliver against those SLAs that you are signing up for. So I don't see any lumpiness. There may be longer deal cycle, mm. but as you sign more and more deals, you will have a steady stream of business. You know, what about this whole digital business? And, you know, we've been talking about how this is the new buzzword and, uh, and the dilemma that most companies are facing at this point in time uh, in order to be able to cope with the changes that we're seeing. Uh, 
how are you coping with this, for instance, at Cognizant? And what is the kind of real opportunity that you're going to be able to capture within this space? Can you share a number with us? TCS, I believe, is looking at $5 billion from the digital space in a couple of years down the line. What would it mean for you, for instance? You know, one thing is for sure. I think everybody will watch for this. Digital is here to stay. Yeah. It is an increased opportunity. If you're not in the digital play, you're going to become very, very irrelevant very soon. Right? So digital is very real. But if you ask me to put a number to this, it's going to be very difficult because digital is permeating everything that you do, yeah. right? So what is digital and what is not digital is going to be very hard to differentiate. Mm. But one thing I can say for sure is if you really want to grow as a company, yeah. the share of digital revenue mm. will grow outpace but, the growth of the company. But will the deal sizes, for instance, uh, be smaller in the digital space in comparison to the traditional uh, businesses? Not likely, because once digital becomes mainstream, they, you know, it's part of the mm. overall end-to-end -end service that you're going to be delivering. So it's going to be embedded in whatever you are doing. So it's mm. going to be very hard to differentiate what is digital and what is not digital. You know, Chandra doesn't have a number. I'm sure McKinsey has a number. <laughs> uh, share that number for us, Noshir. I'm, I'm sure you're dying to. Well, we, generally we have a number for most things, but Chandra is right. I think uh, digital is harder to put a number down. If you look at... Um, let me say six technologies to be specific. The smack stack, IoT plus cybersecurity, everything around those six areas, they comprise today 10% of incremental spend. Okay, the incremental spend typically on an IT budget is about 30% of total spend. Okay. That's going to go to 80% in the next five to seven years. Mm. Right? So if you look at that share of the new technologies going up, in the incremental spend base, it's certainly a very, very significant proportion. That's why both the arguments that I don't see digital in my numbers today, mm. but I think it's such a hot thing, is both valid. Mm. What is actually true is that at least our first impression of digital is that it doesn't leave the same level of annuity spend yeah. as traditional technologies did. I mean, that is the promise of digital. So I think providers will have to work a lot harder in the future as the migration digital happens okay. because it doesn't leave that much of a continuing revenue spend unless you become a platform provider yourself.